Hello friends, this video on oscillations part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 10 before going ahead with part 11. Now let us understand this mathematically. Let us suppose that we have an object which moves in a circular path like this. Now let us suppose this is the center of the circle. And this is the diameter of the circle. Say the center of the circle is O. Now let us consider a particle which moves along this circular path. For instance, we consider that that particle is at some point P. So the particle is at point P. So let us join this. Right? And we say that the radius of the circle is say R. Let us suppose that R is the radius of the circle. Now, at, for any particle, at any point of time along this circle, this particle is moving with velocity, say angular velocity omega. So, the angular velocity, angular velocity of the particle is denoted by omega. Now, what would be the angular position of the particle? Because when we talk of a circular motion, we talk of quantities like angular velocity, angular position, because a circular motion has a lot to do with angles, right? Because the position of the particle or the state of the particle is basically determined by the angle which it makes to the center of the circle. So, the angular position will be given by it will be given by say this angle theta. Let us suppose this angle theta determines the angular position of the particle. So what will be theta? Theta will be nothing but integration of omega dt. Why so? Because angular velocity omega is nothing but d theta by dt. Right? So we can say that this is omega dt. So this is nothing but omega t plus some constant, let us suppose we take that constant as phi. So this is nothing but this omega t plus phi is the angular position of the particle. That is this theta is nothing but omega t plus phi. Right? Now what would be the projection of this particle p on the x-axis? This is my x-axis. We consider that this is x axis and this is the origin. So this side would be minus x. Correct. So what would be the projection of this particle on the x axis? Why are we talking about projection? That's because in the previous slide what I told you? I told that the particle is moving in a circular path. But for any person whose line of sight is exactly on the same line as that of the motion of the particle. So along that line, the person sees the motion as a simple harmonic motion. So here also our aim is what makes a particle moving in a circular path to be viewed as a simple harmonic motion. So the projection of this particle P on the X axis would be somewhere at this point let us suppose this point is P dash. Right. So the projection of particle P on X axis is P dash. So what is the displacement of this particle P dash? The displacement of this particle P dash from the origin would be this distance. Let us call this distance as X. So if this distance is equal to X, so what do we say? projection of P, of projection of particle P on X axis will be equal to P dash. Right. So now what determines the displacement at four point P dash? That is determined by this R. What is this X? This is a right angle triangle, right? 
So this x is nothing but r cos theta, where r is the radius. And what is theta? We just now told that theta is nothing but omega t plus phi. So this will be r cos omega t plus phi. So what is this? Just look at this equation and think of something. Displacement is given by r cos omega t plus phi. This is the equation of a simple harmonic motion. Right? So what does this show? This shows that the projection of... Now, what is this particle P? What is this point P? This point P is the position of the particle at any instant of time P. So at any instant of time P, the projection of this particle P is P dash. Similarly, as the particle keeps moving in the circular path, let us suppose at any time T, it is at point P. After some time, the particle will move to, say, this point P1. So at that time, its projection will be at some point, say, P1 dash. Then again, the particle will move to this point. Let us say it is P2. So that time, its projection on the x-axis will become P2 dash. So as the particle on the circular path progresses from P to P1 to P2, this projections also move from P dash to P1 dash to P2 dash and so on. Now let us suppose the particle moves to some point P3. So the projection again comes to P3 dash. Now suppose this particle again moves to some point P4. So the projection again goes to some point say P4 dash. So what do we see? We see that as the particle keeps moving on the upper half of the circle in this way, the projection, the projection kept moving towards left. Right? When the particle started moving in the lower half of the circle, then the projection started moving towards right. Now, what are these two arrows indicating? These two arrows are indicating a position where the object is swinging from right to left and again left to right and so on. So, this motion is nothing but a simple harmonic motion. Now understand this very clearly. As an object moves in a circular path, as it passes through various positions at different times, its projection also keeps displacing from one point to another in such a way that it follows the pattern of a simple harmonic motion. So using this diagram, you can very clearly understand how a circular motion is interpreted in the form of a simple harmonic motion. So, here what we did was basically using the expression, the general expression or the general terminologies which we use for circular motion, using that I just proved that the displacement of the projection is nothing but the equation of simple harmonic motion. Now using this we will calculate the velocity in case of simple harmonic motion as well as acceleration because we have already found the displacement in case of simple harmonic motion. So let us have a quick review of what we studied in the previous slide because it is a very important concept to understand. So in this diagram again, let me plot the various positions while an object moves in a circular path. Right now, forget about simple harmonic motion. Just consider that you have an object which moves along a circular path. So it moves from P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, P9, P10. So this is how an object moves along a circular path. 
that is if you draw the radius vectors for each of the positions this is how it moves right now for each of these positions what would be the projection of the particle on the x axis this is how this arrow indicates the direction in which the object is moving now when the object is at p1 its projection would be at p1 dash similarly when the object is at p2 its projection will be at p2 dash at p3 the projection is at p3 dash again p4 it is p4 dash for p5 it is p5 dash now as the object starts moving from p6 onwards so from p6 it is somewhere around this point again p7 it is somewhere around this point let us a p7 dash and so on so what do we observe we observe that as the object moves in a circular path that their projection appear to move from right to left and then from left to right so this particular motion of the projection so basically the projections are moving like this this is let us say this is p1 and this is p6 dash so it moves from p1 p1 dash to p6 dash again it moves back and this motion continues so as the object keeps moving in a circular path at different instants of time their projection along the x axis keeps moving from right to left left to right and so on therefore what is the conclusion of this discussion simple harmonic motion is the projection of uniform circular motion on a diameter of the circle in which the lateral motion takes place that means if an object is executing a uniform circular motion then the projection of that uniform circular motion on the diameter of that circle is a simple harmonic motion so this is the concept why when you move a stone along a circular path somebody who views it exactly straight along the line of sight and the plane of the motion that person observes it as a simple harmonic motion now let us calculate the velocity and acceleration of simple harmonic motion using this concept that is with the help of uniform circular motion let us calculate the values of velocity and acceleration and then we will see that whether the values of velocity and acceleration match with the values which we derive it from the simple harmonic motion thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again